All right, everybody, here we are back at it again. So, first off, decided to use the spare battery tray, the unused battery tray, as my spare parts holder for this project, which I think is pretty clever. And then I, because of the way I soldered the FETs back in and these weren't perfectly aligned, I had to trim this little piece, set it back on there. And that's to make sure that the lid doesn't contact these because these are actually at battery voltage. And you know, that'd be, and the chassis is at the negative side of battery voltage, so that'd be a dead short. Yeah, so I'm gonna throw the lid on here real fast and then show you guys my setup for mounting this. I was trying to see what was not letting this shut all the way in. It's just a nice big chunk of foam on top of the inverter that needs to be pressed down. And eventually I'm gonna come back and run a fan in here, which you probably saw sitting in the spares box. But for now, I'm just gonna run it off wall power to charge up the batteries, mainly so I can start playing around with the BMS logic, protection logic, and things like that. Alright, so either I'm being really dumb here, or I've got two left rails. I mean, obviously I can just run this rail around the other way, but then it's, you know, it's got its big support lip in the back. Um, instead of in this corner up here, which is where the transformer is situated. So that's a little frustrating, but we'll go ahead and go with it because I'm sure it's, it's better than nothing. All right, so I turned the camera off there for a bit to try and figure out a way to mount these. And I think I found out the right holes to use for for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these in and see how it goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is most definitely hollow. The, uh, once I got past the, uh, there we go. Once I got past the threaded section of the screw into the unthreaded section, it's, it's pretty loose. So we'll go ahead and put them in, but we'll definitely have to switch them out down the road. Alrighty, that's the front set done. Let's slide this stack of tables out and do the back set. Alrighty, well I put the back four in, laying on my back, working working under there. Wasn't able to film it very well, but here's a after the fact shot, proving those two are in, and you'll just have to trust me that the other two are in. Uh, it is actually a one heck of a lot sturdier, now that, uh, imagine that, you know, you support it front and rear and uh, gets a lot sturdier. So I think I'll still go ahead and give this a try as a temporary setup and I'll let you know how, I'll, well, I'll show you how it goes. Oh. Well, there's something wrong slightly with the width. I'm guessing it's because I have this one spun around backwards so that it'll fit on there. I'm going to play with it for a second and report back. So you guys can watch me struggle some more.
<sighs> All right, well, what seems to be in the way now is these brackets, um, which I'm pretty sure I don't need because it's sitting, you know, it's being supported by the, the shelves underneath the rail. This, these screws definitely are not happy, but this thing won't see much much wiggling for the time being. So I think I'm, I'm gonna pull these off, finish sliding it in, put the faceplate on, and then uh, definitely I'll get some like expanding sheetrock screws or something of that nature to secure this better. Well, here we go. I guess when I redo this, I'll have to paint these black. Maybe I'll paint this black too so it blends in better. I'll have to cut a hole in, in the bottom of this to run to the battery bank or top, depending on which way I'm running the cables. But there we go. At least this gets it off my desk for the time being. Alrighty. Well, now, mainly because I want to see the battery voltage actually change on the BMS and start programming in some of the contactor logic and just see and see how the balancing functionality of this works as well. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this back in like I did for testing. This is fused um, and I'm only running a couple computer monitors and a laptop off this so I'm, it won't last too long but I'll let this charge it up via the wall and then I'll unplug it from the wall and just see how long it goes. So yeah, here we go. All right, here it goes. There it goes, humming away. Should be charging up the batteries. I'll, um, hook up a USB connection to this and we'll see what the, the web interface says. Alrighty, so excuse the hand filming here, but we've got some cells that are reading pretty high, 3.66, and now I'm gonna hop over there and verify this. Um, what I'm concerned is that while the, the drawdown action of the BMS, the balancing action is running, that it, I'm getting a significant voltage drop across that 20, I think it was 28 gauge wire. So yeah, let's go ahead and probe some of those and see what we get in the real world. Alrighty, so cell number one, which should be this one, um, says that it's balancing, but the red light's not on. Oh yeah, so it, it's definitely, it's clearly getting hot and I've just messed up the LED somehow. All right, so that one's currently reporting 3.607, so 3.6 volts with a spike, the most high, the highest voltage in recent history of 3.7 volts. So let's look. Helps if you have your meter not on amp modes. Hopefully I didn't just fry the fuse right there. Oh yeah, and that cell is definitely being overcharged. So let's uh, let's disconnect this real fast, and uh, yeah, let this balance down. Alrighty. Well, what I've decided is that I'm going to take and plug the battery bank back in, but then I'm going to go ahead and unplug the wall power going to the UPS and drain this bank down, uh, down to, I don't know, something 2.8, 2.9 volts, something, you know, low. And then I'm going to change the BMS's um, balance set point to try and have it achieve a bottom balance. And so I'll show you guys, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you all an update once I've drawn the battery banks down and I'll change the settings and we can see the behavior and make sure and then we'll see ultimately how good of a balance it comes up with. Well, it has been several days since the last clip and we have had an adventure. Not that big of an adventure, but an adventure nonetheless. I've got these batteries 
bottom balanced, finally. If it decides to focus, there it goes. See, they're all just under 2.8 volts. Getting there was a whole different process. Because I found the special feature on these, these sub-modules, there, 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 there. As you reprogram them, there, as you reprogram their voltage, uh, you know, set point, the set point at which they start burning off excess energy, they lose the ability to temperature regulate themselves and they just go full bore, dump heat. They were heating up to the mid to high 80s Celsius, dumping current. So that's not ideal, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, I was able to fix it eventually by unplugging and replugging each one. And after it resets, it remembers its programmed value, as in the, the voltage set point. But now the PID temperature regulation seems to work. So it's a relatively minor issue uh, now, as I don't see myself jumping these things willy-nilly, you know, changing the voltage day by day. But I'm definitely gonna, it's an open source project, I'm definitely gonna dig in and, and see what happens. Uh, I think I'm experiencing this faster than other users because these, this seems to be meant for lithium ion, like, you know, your 18650s, where I'm using them with lithium iron phosphate, which is just a whole different set of voltage, well, slightly lower set of voltages. So, I've got these bottom balanced at 2.8, really even. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change directions a bit and start playing with the relay board I have for the BMS, which will let me run my contactors and some of the things that will disconnect the battery when it's, uh, when it needs to be, you know, if a cell's too low or too high. So, yeah, I'll get into that and let you guys know how it goes. All right, here we go. I've got it hooked up. You can see no LEDs on the relay board. Come here, relay default, change that one to on, hit save. It takes a second. Really takes a second. There it goes. So we've got it wired up correctly at least. Come here, set that back to off. So yeah, so now I'm gonna try my, I'll just try these different, different rules if I can. All right, so I set this up with individual cell over voltage at 3.7, which this is lithium iron phosphate, so that makes sense. That'll turn the pack off. Pack over voltage, I did 3.65 times eight cells, I think, math. Pack under voltage, I did 2.9 times eight cells. Those are don't cares. Uh, the communications error also seems to be having an issue where I try and change that number. I'd love it too if it's having a problem communicating with one of the modules, just turn this off. But I left that as a don't care. And so as soon as I get this pack charged back up, I'll, I'll set that to off and that should be my, uh, my basic protection uh, set up correctly. And then I'll make another clip here running through my setup of protection. Alrighty, so I have two of these Gigavac brand contactors. I mean, I have a lot more than that sitting in my shed. Um, there's the model number for those playing along at home. And yeah, I got a whole bunch of these from the guy I bought batteries from. I mean, he basically gave me, gosh, I think eight of them just for free. He was trying to get rid of them. He had drawers of the things. And so these are 24 volt uh, DC rated, as you can see. And they're good for 50 amps continuous and they'll surge up to 200 amps, but that's only for like two or three seconds. So just to be safe, because there's a small chance if I'm running the inverter fully tapped out, I'll be sustaining over 50 amps. I'm gonna run two in parallel. Um, you know, load sharing isn't perfect, but I'm sure it'll be good enough just to take the edge off of things. So yeah, so those are both gonna be switched by the same relay down here, the one that's currently on, and that'll serve you know, to shut down my pack if it's being underdrawn or uh, I'm not sure about overcharged. I don't think that'll happen, or if it does, it'll only be happening via the UPS. I'm, I, I trust my solar uh, charge controller, which I haven't shown you guys yet. Um, and, I, and I've always heard with the solar charge controllers, if you disconnect the batteries while solar is still hooked up, it'll damage them. So yeah, so that's uh, that's my protection hardware. and. I think 
I'll call this video here. So yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll be putting more parts of this project out as it comes along. I finally got my angle grinder back for my brother, so I'll be able to cut the fan vent in that. And I'll open that up and replace the caps in there, try and reduce the humming some. And then in that next video too, I'll probably do a system overview. I hope to pick up the solar panels sometime soon. And those are the last parts of the system I don't have sitting here. So we can talk about the overlay. There we go. You guys enjoy. Have a nice whatever time of day it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you next time.